Today we're going to be taking a look at Apple's Logic Pro 9 and how to set up an arpeggiator. So first things first, we're going to go ahead and assign a sound to the I.O. This is just a blank track that I have open right now. No instruments assigned to it or anything like that. So if you look over on the left hand side down at the bottom, if you're not sure how to set up an instrument, um, it's real easy. Right here where it says I.O., there's a little box below it. Just click in there with your left mouse button, hold it down, and then a, another little dialog menu window will open up. Select ES2, Synthesizer, Stereo, and now it'll play back some sound. It'll play back some sound, but we're going to go ahead and pick a different instrument. So go up to the top, and all the two little arrows, go ahead and just keep scrolling. Look for a sound, I think it's called Miami Lead. Let's see. Yeah, right here, Miami lead. So we can work with that. All right, so now we have our sound assigned to our channel. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set up the arpeggiator. So what you want to do now is go into the environment window. The environment window is uh, like a huge mixer, and you can set up different um, components into Logic to do different things. Um, so you can do that by hitting the command and 8 key and that will actually open up the environment window and another way you can do that is just go to window and then go to environment and it tells you what the shortcut is right here as well so now that we have the environment window open we need to actually um, add an arpeggiator so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go right here where it says new click on that drop down and we're going to go down to the very bottom and we're going to select Arpeggiator. So it inserts this little white box here which looks like an instrument uh, in it. And if you look at it, you'll, you'll notice that there's a little triangle right here in the top right hand corner. So what that is, is that that'll let you actually link to the uh, track that has this, the instrument on it. And that's going to make our sound arpeggiate when we play back the sequencer. So if you drag this little white uh, triangular object you see what well, something looks like a little cable now see that so what you're gonna do is you run this little cable and you're gonna plug it in to this track right here and you can see you know where depending on where I move it the track is turning gray so that's how you know which um, which track you're gonna insert the arpeggiator on so I'm gonna go ahead and put it on instrument 15 because when I play it back um, that's the channel that actually has the meter in it so all I do is I just drag it up here and I connected it to the very top. Now I know that the arpeggiator is uh, connected to this, this uh, certain individual track. The next thing we're going to do is before we can start to arpeggiate our sound is we need to drag the arpeggiator from this view here out into our uh, uh, global tracks view here and that's real easy. You just click it, hold down your left mouse button and drag it over to this window. Now it's going to ask you, do you want to create it, um, create, an, uh, create tracks for the environment object? Obviously, yes. So hit create, and now it actually sets up an arpeggiator here in this window. The other window is still open. It's just in the background. I didn't close out of it, but we can uh, continue to toggle back and forth if needed. So it's still not arpeggiating, but basically let me explain how this works. So the top uh, track is our original that has our instrument on it. <laughs> The bottom is basically the arpeggiator for that track. So there really aren't a whole lot of controls associated with the bottom uh, track where the arpeggiator is. The top one has obviously a lot more. So you can see, you can change the icon if you wanted to. Um, you could change some of the other settings in here for it, the sound and all that stuff. You could actually even add in um, effects to it if, if, you, if you wanted to. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the arpeggiator and it's still not arpeggiating but we can easily fix that so arpeggiator only will work when you play back the instrument in the sequencer in order to get the sequencer to play back you have to hit the play button down here so the next thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to play this right now Okay, 
So the next thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to change some settings in the arpeggiator to make it sound um, really the way how we want it to sound. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to change this um, right here where it says direction to up down. And we're going to change um, another setting in here as well, which is um, we're going to change this to the resolution to from 1.8 to 1.16. It's playing back a whole lot faster. Um, real quick, one thing I want to mention in Logic Pro 9 is when you're working with the arpeggiator, whenever you have this thing set to loop and it gets to the end, it'll automatically cut off your arpeggiator. So sometimes it's better to just take it off. Okay, so now we have our arpeggiator set up. say we want to give it a little bit of effects on here so I'm gonna uh, actually turn up bus one I know there's a hall on there so now you can actually hear the difference give a little more hall all right so let's play back now and our tempo is at 138 uh, 138 beats per minute change the length. I'm going to change this to 116 as well. These are all the different um, um, options you can se select for the direction. So up. If I want to change the sound, I can just come up here and keep looking for different sounds. So I went back to my main track here. And now we can just keep going and looking for new sounds. Go back here. Let it play. So now what you can do, if you wanted, you can come in here and you can pencil in an arpeggiator track and then you can just 
pencil in another note, stretch it out, and it'll arpeggiate that. Okay. And then you can do multiple. in here so I'm going to go to the insert let's see if we can do something with the filter say we wanted to add some filter in there um, and automate that filter we could do that so I selected a fuzz wah here and uh so I'm gonna now try to attempt to automate that so I'm gonna go ahead and do automation and select fuzz wah. So if you come in here where it says volume and hit the left mouse button, select number two. And let's see here. I'm trying to think which one it might be. Pedal range. Pedal range. I think it's this one here. Pedal range. And select your pencil tool. And draw it in and see what happens here. Yeah, that's the right one. So there you go, a real quick tutorial on using Arpeggio in Apple's Logic Pro 9. Thanks for watching and please subscribe. Stay tuned for more helpful videos.